Hello, people of YouTube. My name is Steve Gray. This is Gray's Guitars. Uh, we're going to be doing something we haven't done in a while here. This is a 1960 St. George guitar. Um, it's kind of like a ripoff of a Gibson ES-335, maybe a 333 because it seems a little smaller. It is the Gibson scale length. We have regular pickups in here, not P90s. Uh, they do work. You didn't miss me doing too much. I mean, a little bit. So what I had to do is I had to replace the volume pot. Uh, the reason I had to replace that was because one of the lugs on it was gone. Uh, also, this screw right here was a little uh, messed up. The wood actually chipped off because of how close this plate is to it. So I just glued in a little bit of a toothpick, a little bit of a super glue. This is really loose. We're going to tighten this in a minute when I get the strings off. I'm going to clean this up a little bit better. It does work. Uh, Top-wise, I had to drill out a little bit of the cavity because you actually could not fit a wrench in there. Um, you don't see it. When you cover it, I know a lot of these old guitars might have been a specialty tool, uh, but I don't have that. All I have is a standard uh, Allen wrench set or hex wrench, whatever you want to call it. We are missing one bushing here, which I may or may not replace at some point. And then screw-wise, we're just missing two screws here on the opposite ends. They were actually both screwed into this side. I put them in opposite ends. Uh, so, yeah. so what I'm going to be doing is taking off the strings, taking off the neck, because I have to shim the neck on this thing. Uh, because I did straighten it out with the trust rod. If you look here, let's see. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. But our 12th fret is sitting at about 3.5. And now you're probably thinking, oh, why don't you just sand down the bridge instead of popping the neck off? Uh, one, I've never done that before. And two, uh, the br this is an arch top. So the bridge is actually at an angle. Um, I don't want to mess with that. So I'm actually going to put a piece of tape on each side of the bridge because the intonation is pretty spot on. Take the strings off, do a neck shim. You've seen me do that before. Uh, brand new strings. We got a pack of Ernie Ball 10s. I think 10s were on this before. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, these strings are probably as old as the guitar. Nothing wrong with a nut. Um, I got the knobs here for this. And then, uh, yeah, we'll play it a little bit. So let me get this unstringed. This right here is your standard index card. Uh, if I'm doing my math right, and I googled it, uh, this should be about 0.25 millimeters thick. So if I, if I need to shim this about 1.5 uh, millimeters. So if I do this, here's 50. Now we're gonna double the 50 by folding it in half again, because you got two layers here. So 50 plus 50 is a Hunsky. Right? Yeah, I got four layers, so that should be a hundred. Now if I fold this again, I should have my eight layers. And uh, I know I only have to technically shim it 1.5 millimeters, but um, the bridge here is so freaking decked down that that's coming out and jabbing me in the hand. So this should do the trick. So now I just need to find something to trim this down with so it fits in my pocket. Lucky for me, I have a pair of wire cutters that should do the trick beautifully. Now, I don't want to have to put screws through this. They might fit anyway. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. I'm going to trim this down on the end too, just a little bit. And the reason we're trimming it down, I mean, you can, for a shim, you can use wood, as I said before. I used plain paper in my Strat, which uh, is not the smartest idea, because regular paper, eventually it, you know, all paper, eventually it's going to break down and get thinner, so that you use a little bit sturdier paper, like in this case, an index card, uh, you ain't got to worry about it. Might go, I think that should be fine. I might go a little bit more. Basically, all I'm trying to do with this is make sure that the screw holes can go all the way through. Let's try that. The neck, because in this case, the neck is not as tight as a fit as I'd like it to be, but it is what it is. So let's see here if you can see what I'm doing. Yup. So I got it on this end of the neck. And the neck is literally all the weight of this guitar. The guitar is freaking weighs nothing. 
all we're going to do here is gently slide that back in, flip her around, watch that whammy bar, don't let us scratch nothing, if I can help it, and take my neck plate like so. This is a top screw. I just need to get, I don't need to get them super tight, but if I just get them in there. You also missed me, see my thumb there. Uh, I 100% stab myself with a string. So you got to miss me doing that off camera. There was some blood, not a lot, but it was bleeding enough where just making sure that's where it needs to be it was bleeding enough where i had to get i don't like that i'm gonna need to put something underneath this what do i have here i guess what i can do is just jimmy that down so there's a little bit of weight neck pocket And you don't have to over tighten. You don't want to over tighten these, especially with bolt-ons, because a lot of stuff you can crack. Just gonna put that back on the plastic. The hole's got to be here somewhere. Oh, you know what? I bet you that stupid index card is in my way. So let's just apply a little bit of pressure and it should go. Yeah, I got it. That's what it was. When I shinned the neck, the holes weren't 100% where they should be. So this right now is getting screwed through the index card. I got my finish coming off over there a little bit. Sorry. She's old, you know. She needs some loving. Almost there. That should be good. And then we, you just go back and check. This one can go a little bit more. This one's good. And I bet you the neck, judging by it when I took it off, has never been off of this guitar. And sometimes that's what you want to see on these old guitars. Because... The less they get messed with, the better. Yeah, that looks better. I did already oil up the fretboard here. Um, so what I'm going to do is figure out, probably clean this up a little bit more, and then I will restring it. So, All right, so it took me a minute to figure out how to do this with the bridge sting <laughs> still. I adjusted the bridge. Uh, they're actually, I might have, are actually sitting down farther. Uh, I honestly don't care though, as long as my neck relief is halfway decent, at the moment it is, is a little bit of relief because I did adjust it earlier and then we got our tool here to make sure that our frets, so we're looking for about 1.6, 1.5, about 1.75 in the high E and about 2 on the low E which is pretty much exactly where I want to be. Uh, the posts are down far enough where it's not going to be stabbing my hand. This is going to be my A string. I'm pretty sure this was uh, strung wrong. Um, they had the string going through this way and wrapping around. And it was kind of a pain to restring it. Um, so I thought that it probably went through like this. Like so. <laughs> I found out something rather annoying. Um, the strings were actually on the guitar the right way, and now I get to restring four of these. So, if you look at the bottom of here, see how these two are going this way? This is how it was originally strings. I was like, oh, I'll just go through the other way. Then it'll be easier to unstring when I got to string it again. No, the reason that these go this way and not this way is because it puts tension on the bar, so this isn't as floppy. So now I get to unstring four of these freaking things and restring them. 
again <laughs> to get it back where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then maybe if I'm not angry, I will film a playing demo tonight. <laughs> Hello, people of YouTube. This is Gray's Guitars. I promised you a demo, so we're going to do a demo because I do have this for sale locally, uh, so I don't know how long I'm going to be keeping it. Uh, what I did is I had to shim the neck. Um, I had to put in a new volume pot, so I learned a little bit about soldering. The switches, the pickups were perfectly fine. Uh, the, the switching is a little finicky. I tightened down the arm. I put new 10 strings on it. Uh, I had to drill out a little bit of the truss rod channel uh, in order to adjust the truss rod, which it did need to be tightened a little bit, just a hair, because um, there was a little bit too much relief in the neck. Here we go. We are going to have a nice little playing demo for you. Going to do some clean, going to do some heavy, even though this type of guitar doesn't really do heavy, because uh, they're like three of them pickups, you know, but uh, we'll see what she's got. We're on the neck pickup right now. Pretty much everything's at 10, going through a PV6505+. plus. Uh, carbon 400 watt 4 by 12 we're just going to do some chords on the clean channel on the neck pickup switch to both. switch to just the bridge pickup. <laughs> yeah, and it does stay in tune surprisingly well for an older guitar. Now let's try to do some heavier stuff. This is going to be interesting. Pretty confident these uh, pickups are not wax potted. All original uh, minus the volume pot. Um, I would recommend getting a tuner bushing for this. That I haven't done. I may do that before I sell it if I get to it. <laughs> channel. I did clean, I did crunch with the 6505 Plus. Uh, now we're on the overdrive. My cat, if you can see him at the bottom of the screen, is probably going to run away in like half a second. <laughs> Thank you. 
without it getting demonetized even though I don't have a thousand subscribers so subscribe please subscribe it helps very much so very gratefully um, I know I, you haven't seen my beautiful face in a while uh, I got another new guitar in Austin it's a cheap strat uh, so I might do a little bit of a same type of video uh, with that I know this is gonna be a longer video it involves more editing uh, so I mean that's what it comes down to is time uh, I tabbed the day off today, so I actually have time to edit this and put it all together, and I'll probably have this uploaded the usual Tuesday, uh, November 1st. I am filming this on Halloween. Uh, so let's see if we can uh, attempt to do some sort of... Let's do some drop D real quick. And let's see if we can uh, figure out some sort of uh, spooky-ish genty-ish Halloween vibe here. She wrote, putting her back on the clean. Please hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me. Let's get me to a thousand subscribers. Let's get me monetized, and I can start doing giveaways for you. Whether it's picks, guitars, equipment, maybe if I get big enough, start giving away guitars too if I can get them cheap out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. While you're down there, turn on that notification bell as well. Leave a like, all that fun stuff. My name is Steve Gray. This is a 1960 St. George ES-335 knockoff, and as always, have a good one. And now we're going to go to the heavy distortion. I lied, we're not going to go to the heavy distortion. <laughs> Let me turn that down a lot. Uh, so yeah, I mean, old pickups. There we go. Uh, general. I mean, I'm standing like 10 feet back. I'm just going to edit some of this crap out. Five, four, three, two, one.